Hello subscribers, welcome new viewers and returning viewers and uh, new subscribers. Um, today is Monday and we uh, review uh, the Beatles uh, collection that I have. And today is a, a review, not a presentation. And it's a review of uh, two copies of the Beatles second album in the UK uh, called With the Beatles. And so I have a stereo copy here. And I have a stereo copy here. And what is the difference? Well, the difference is literally, literally night and day. This is, in simple words, awful. <laughs> this first pressing here. It is a uh, 1980s uh, copy uh, of what uh, the 1963 album sounded like. And apparently... Back in the day in 1963, uh, when they were recording their second album, they kind of uh, they didn't have very good uh, stereo systems uh, back in 1963. So the sound was tailored towards the, st the, uh, the record players of the day. And that is why this sounds so awful. I do have a, a Bush turntable. Uh, I put it on my Lenko P300 and it was bad. And I put it on my uh, Bush turntable, which I got uh, in Burnham on Sea, in uh, B&M in Burnham on Sea. And uh, <laughs> it sounded woeful. It really, really just it was just bad. It was tinny. It was, uh, you know, uh, it was just uh, crap on crap, basically. Not blonde on blonde. It was crap on crap. And it was just uh, awful. If if you're starting to collect Beatles albums and you're not aware of the difference between the sounds of the different pressings of Beatles albums, please don't get this. Uh, what are you? You know, you're in a record shop and you see this pressing and you go, yay! Uh, don't don't get this album. It is just it is just awful beyond beyond the. Uh, uh, belief really uh the, the sound is just awful it is just really really uh just uh it's just literally it's it's crap it's just jarring and really really bad to uh listen to and uh it will put you off listening to the beatles and uh we don't want that uh what called this album is a lo wonderful album i call it the their motown album and um I call Beatles for Sale their Nashville album. Uh, this is again, it's their second album, and like Elvis, uh, they released uh, their first two albums uh, in their first year of uh, recording, and then they went on, they both went and done movies straight after their second albums. So um, it was released in November twenty uh, second of November nineteen sixty three, uh, the same day that. Uh, JFK was shot, and it was also the same day. Um, Oddless Huxley died, the guy who wrote um, "Oh, Brave New World" and C.S. Lewis. So that's uh, I wonder what kind of uh, <laughs> astrology stuff was going on um, back then. So if you're an astrologer and you're into the Beatles, uh, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, don't get this out this pressing of the album it is just depressing to listen to it is just woeful to the ears compared to this pressing of the album which and i'm going to be possibly a little bit controversial is a d.a gastoni uh, 180 grams and the sound is just completely different it is really very very different again it's night and day uh, you know, I think they had uh, compression things on the sound in the, that album. And uh, the only reason to have this is uh, if you're a mad collector like me and uh, you want to find out what the different pressings are like, uh, you know, that's a good reason to have it. But if you're starting out, avoid. Avoid at all costs. <laughs> Go for the D.A. Gastoni uh, 180 grams. That's uh, Beatles on a budget, and you don't want to be going into uh, HMV and uh, they overcharging you uh, uh, for a Beatles album. Uh, go to Beatles.com and you get a good deal there. 
or even Amazon. And you get, again, you get, and then try uh, your um, local uh, record shop as well. They'll probably have better deals. So, but yeah, just uh, become aware of different pressings. And apparently, and I don't have a, a monocopy, but the monocopy uh, from back in the day is supposed to be far superior and more uh, tailored to the kind of uh, not very good, uh, what you call it, turntables uh, that were out at back in the day. But uh, I'm quite happy with this. I don't have an official uh, stereo. This is official. Uh, it's an official Diagostani. And I don't have uh, an official, official uh, uh, Beatles, uh, with the Beatles album uh, <coughs> in my collection yet. But uh, that's the joy of collecting. I will probably get it. I'll probably get it on from Beatles.com uh, along with uh, the white vinyl and uh, good stuff like that. But that, uh, we have a long way to go on that, so. <laughs> but uh, what are my favourite songs on this album? Um, I quite like uh, George Harrison. This is the first album uh, George Harrison wrote a song on. I can sort of read that writing. Can't read that, I'm not going to even bother attempting to. I have dyslexic, so I'm doing my best and I'm reading through the phone. And so that's... Don't Bother Me, George Harrison. And then they have a lot of covers, a lot of uh, Motown stuff and soul stuff. So that's why I'm calling it the Mo Beatles Motown album. And then, oh yeah, so on the first side, my favourite songs are Don't Bother Me, Please Mr. Postman and All My Loving. And then I love uh, Roll Over Beethoven and it's George Harrison singing it. And then I like uh, I Want to Be Your Man, which was supposed to be, uh, I think they gave that to the Rolling Stones as well. So Ringo stings on that one. And then after that is Money. But I like all the songs, so they're just my favourites uh, on each side. I'm just wondering, uh, I watched, uh, oh, re watched uh, the remake of The Italian Job, and there's a, um, I'm straying a little bit here. But in the Italian job, they have uh, Slash doing his version of Pink Floyd's Money. I think this would have been a better fit for that movie uh, than uh, Slash doing his uh, version of uh, Pink Floyd's Money. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think of that idea. But uh, with the Beatles, I quite like it. It's a definite 10 out of 10. But again, just be aware, do your research. Be aware of um, how different pressings sound. Usually some of the stuff from the 80s is a uh, rule of thumb. Just be wary of 1980s uh, pressings. Especially on CD as well. So uh, just, just be aware. But if you have the, uh, uh, the Beatles Greatest Hits um, on a stereo, that's actually a very good pressing. So... Um, and that's from the 80s as well. So uh, that's kind of uh, breaking the rule of thumb. So I give this a definite 100 uh, out of uh, 100%. Not 10%, uh, 100%. And it's a Diego uh, Stoney uh, copy. Uh, please let me know which pressing is your uh, preference for this uh, album. Again, I only have two copies. I'll be after a mono copy. And then I'll be after the official copy. Uh, this is also, uh, the American version is called um, Meet the Beatles. And in America, they kind of released all, all they, they were with a different record label, Capital. And uh, they released uh, all their albums fair, fairly differently, all their early albums fairly differently. And um, it's called Meet the Beatles, and it was featured in uh, the Nicolas Cage movie, uh, The Rock. And uh, he spent 500 quid on the album, so, <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> What's the most money amount of money you, you have spent on an album? Uh, I think it was about 50 quid I spent most on, a, on an album. That was the Pink Floyd uh, UV... Uh, print of a uh, dark side of the moon and very much worth it and uh, yeah 
So if you stuck out at the end of this video, why well, thank you ever so much. Uh, you've been an absolutely fantastic audience. And so Tuesdays going forward, I'm going through uh, all the Beatles albums I have and I'll be giving um, all uh, an individual uh, review. And uh, I would very much appreciate uh, any recommendations for different pressings uh, in the comments below. So again, thank you very much for sticking out to the end of this video. Uh, you've been an absolutely fantastic audience and we talk to you again in the next video.